So having said all of that, I wanted to share some things with you all that I've experienced in the last week or so. And um, I'm just going to get right into it. I was down praying, and I had prayed, and I like to, after I have finished speaking to the Lord, I like to take a few moments of time and allow Him, while I wait upon Him, to speak to me. And this particular day, I didn't have to wait very long, and He spoke to me and He said, Patty, I want you to give me your rings. And I said, or he said, ring. And I said, Lord, my ring? And he said, yes. And I said, well, I only have two. And one is my wedding band. And the other is my mother's ring that my children bought me uh, a few years ago uh, on my 50th birthday. And uh, I said, but Lord... You're welcome to all that I have. I will give them to you. And he said, I'm talking about the ring on your heart. And I said, Lord, I didn't know I had a ring on my heart. He said, you do. And I want you to give me the ring on your heart. And I said, Lord, if there's a ring upon my heart, I give it to you. And all that I am I give to you and he said I take the ring upon your heart and seal you unto myself and that was all he said and I got up from prayer and I thought I've never heard or comprehended such a thing so I said Lord will you show me in Scripture where something like that would be written that I might understand more fully. He said, you're not going to find it worded exactly like that in Scripture. But he told me to look, and I've got it written up here on my monitor. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. And it says, Set me as a seal upon thine heart as a seal upon thine arm for love is strong as death jealousy is cruel as the grave the coals thereof are coals of fire which hath a most vehement heat or flame i'm sorry and i thought hmm set me as a seal upon thine heart well for those of you that know me I generally read the King James Version Bible. I feel that it's the closest to the original language that you can get without digging. But I'm one that digs. So I will search the Greek in the Hebrew meanings. Uh, many times I will also look into the uh, complete Jewish Bible or the Amplified Bible as well. But I like to dig out the meanings because I realized that when the King James Bible was interpreted that he himself was a king and there was times that he would add a little bit and maybe change the meanings of some of the words because it, his popularity with the people was important to him. But out of all of the translations his still remained the closest to the original text so anyway where it said set me as a seal I wanted to dig into that and if you look up the Hebrew word which in the Strong's Concordance would be H2368 seal means a signature ring and if we look at that then he, Jesus was saying to me, set me as a ring, as a seal upon thine heart. So I had a ring upon my heart, and he asked me to give that to him, that he would seal me 
unto himself. And it's took me a week to think on that and to pray about it. And when I went to bed last night, I don't know about the rest of you, but I learned a long time ago that I will not trust my soul, my eternal soul, to any man. I've had preachers in my lifetime tell me to go ahead when I was at the altar on bended knees, crying and praying out to the Lord. They would say, get up. You know, you're all right. He understands. He's heard your prayers. You're forgiven. You're this. You're that. But I wouldn't get up. And they grew weary with me. And I've heard them say things. And I was a, a, a note taker everywhere I went. I would write down every sermon that I heard preached and all of their text reference that they would give. And I would take that home and I would study it. And you wouldn't believe, and it's sad, but the amount of times that I found that the Word of God had been rested and twisted to mean and to fit the doctrine that they were standing by and upholding, and it wasn't the truth of the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit would show me. And so I learned over the years that even though I love people, I may respect them and never dishonor anyone or speak out against them as in, you know, I don't know how to say that because there's times that people need to be accountable and they need to be held accountable and be responsible for the delivering of the Word of God. But I don't just come out and, and am rude and uh, anything like that. but. I learned not to trust my soul to anybody but the Lord Jesus and to hear from Him and to make sure each day with Him that I am pleasing to Him because I can't please man no matter how hard I try. Somebody somewhere has always got an issue or a problem with me and I can't please man and I'm thankful that we don't have to. But I do have to please Jesus. And so I was praying last night and I said, Lord, it is it important to me. It means everything to me for you to show me and reveal to me that I am indeed the sealed of God. That your seal is upon me, upon my forehead. Uh, the way the scripture talks, you know, um, I'm not sure it might be the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation. But um, when the locusts come up out of the smoke, they're going to be able to harm those people who do not have the seal of God in their forehead. But those that do, they cannot touch. And... I needed to know, not because of that scripture, but to know that God's seal was upon me. And when I went to bed last night, he gave me a dream. And this dream, I've pondered on it all day. I shared it with Ronnie. I began to cry. And as I was sharing it with Ronnie, I saw Ronnie's little oak chin begin to quiver and his eyes welled up with tears because the dream revealed so much about the Lord Jesus and our Heavenly Father and about us that we just don't see unless he opens our eyes to see. But in this dream, there was a large group of people. I don't even know how many people would have been there had gathered before the Lord and I was there but I was standing by the Lord and he was seated upon a throne now I know it was him and I was by him and he was talking to me but I didn't get to see him 
I can't, if I did in the dream when I woke, I couldn't remember to describe to you what he looked like or anything like that. So, but he was speaking to me about being sealed and how we would recognize who belonged to him and who did not and how easy it is for him to see and know his children and his messenger angels that he would send into the world to do the things that must be done how they quickly recognize and know those who belong to the Lord and whom God has sealed and what he showed me was here would come people and it was like a judgment but for some reason I knew that it wasn't the final judgment that I was looking at but it was still some sort of judgment that I was witnessing and he would allow me to see through his eyes during this time and these people they would come up in front of him and you know I would see them first of all walking and mingling and talking with other one another but then there would come points of time where it would grow silent and each one would be given an opportunity to step forward and to speak and to say something well this one walked up and oh my goodness I I wish I had better words to describe it but in their eyes they appeared to have multiple crowns upon their head crown after crown after crown after crown of like gold and jewels and their raiment was out of this world extravagant and just jewels and gold and everything all over them and how they perceived themselves and the Lord said to me he said you see them you see how they perceive themselves you see all of those crowns in the in the attire and the way they carry themselves and the words that they're speaking and everything he said they're the only ones that see themselves like that he said you notice no one else is paying any attention to them but they see themselves that way they call themselves by my name he said but let me show you how I see them and when I looked through his eyes they were stripped they were poor they were naked they were filled with shame there were no crowns on their heads their clothing was just rags and that's how God saw them then the next person stepped up and they looked like a pauper they were just humble the, the most humble people I had ever seen not only their looks but their speech their heart um, they were tender they had no crowns on their head their clothing was just poor and they just spoke with love but they looked pitiful and God said you see how they see themselves in their own eyes I said yes he said let me show you how they look to me and when I looked through his eyes they had the most beautiful crowns upon their head that I had ever seen and their clothing was pure and clean and white and the love and the joy of the Lord for them was beyond anything that I had ever experienced in my life there was no doubt how he felt about them how he knew every need that they had every fiber of their being was known to him all their cells their bones their joints their marrow 
the hair of their head numbered. And he had so much joy. Oh, you could feel like love and joy and happiness. They weren't separate things. They were all joined together. And the only way I knew to describe that to Ronnie was I said, Ronnie, can you imagine what it would sound like and what it would make you feel like if each time that I looked at you and I felt love toward you that a 30,000 piece orchestra would strike up what that sound would do to you. I said when the Lord looked upon them his love was so great his joy was so full he was so proud and so pleased with them and he knew every need that they had and all their needs would be met in him and I could tell how that if they had an enemy or anyone was going to do them harm how his eye would be upon that and how his hand would swiftly come to their aid because they were his they belonged to him and he was going to protect them and he would meet their every need they were his joy he was they were his pleasure he loved them with a love that was greater than anything I have ever even thought to know I can't even there's no words to describe how great and how deep this love is this concern the care that is given the joy that is expressed in him and that he feels and I know a lot of people they say you know that the Lord is angry and he's filled with wrath and he's weeping over people but folks in this dream those who called themselves by his name they would have not been ready should the Lord come and uh, what I saw out of him was he had, was almost emotionless he saw them he was not pleased but it was like I don't know how to describe it he was not angry he was not sorrowful he was not crying he would not beg to them you know to serve him it was just as though he was just saying you see and I knew what their end result would be and he knew but his full 100% focus and attention was upon his own and in the day that he comes with vengeance and pours out his wrath he won't be standing like he did over Jerusalem weeping and saying oh Jerusalem Jerusalem how I would have gathered thee like a hen her chicks but you would not he won't be weeping anymore because you see if you don't have the seal of God in your forehead and belong to him then you will have sworn allegiance to the beast and the antichrist and you will have his mark in your hand or your forehead and when the Lord comes he will not see you as his creation and weep over you but he will see you as a possession of Satan who he has been long suffering and give him time and been kept his word and he will be a just God and when he comes He's going, even the brightness of his coming is going to destroy his enemies. The sword of his mouth. He's not coming weeping and sorrowful. He will mount up as a great king warrior. 
set out to avenge his own blood and the blood of his children whom he loves beyond anything that I could have imagined. Those that are in Christ Jesus are his joy. They are his pleasure. And I can understand now why he said that he takes joy in the pleasure in the death of one of his saints. What a homecoming. He's so pleased to have them with him. I don't even know. I thought maybe if I waited a week or two I would have better words to describe what I saw. And then I thought, well, you know, maybe there's a reason to put it out today. But I want you to know that you need to pray and you need to ask the Lord to reveal to you if He's pleased with you or not. Please don't play games. He doesn't see you the way you see yourself. And you need to ask Him to allow you to see yourself through His eyes and to know where you stand in Him. And this also, see, has built my confidence and my faith and my trust because I know how much my Father cares about me. What I mean to Him and what He means to me. He hates pride. I saw that clear and he hates a prideful and proud look. He loves the humble and those who come to him realizing that he is their everything and meets their every need and that they love him and he loves them. There's a right way to approach God and it's always humbly in humility coming lowly before him and realizing that he alone is God yet he's your father and loves you I don't want to keep rambling um, it was a beautiful dream and also the scripture in the song of Solomon set me as a seal upon thine heart for love is strong. So I love you. Jesus bless you. And until the next time. Bye bye.